morning everyone. My name is Anderson Alcuano and I'm here to give you a short discussion about linear equations in one variable. In particular, on how to solve a linear equation in one variable. What is the key to one's success? Of course, if you're an adult or if you're a grown-up, the keys to one's success are the following. You have to have a good job. You have to have a good family. And of course, you have to have a good relationship with all the people around you. Now that being said, does that mean you have to grow up first for you to become successful? Actually, you know. You, as students, you can become successful as well. Now how is that possible? If S here represents success in life as a student, then S equals A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Brain well is A. Study well is B. Eat well is C. Play well is D. And sleep well is E. That means, in order for you as students to become successful, you have to do all these things. Now, let's try to put it in a more practical way. Let's use a scale. In this scale, your S can be found on the left side, and all the things that you have to do to become successful can be found on the right side. Now, what happens if you fail to do one thing? If you fail to do one thing, your success rate will fall down. That means, I assure you that if you want to be successful in life, as a student, you have to play well, you have to study well, you have to eat well, play well, and sleep well. That means you have to do all these things so that you can become successful. Now, let's try to uh, take a look at this one deeper. Again, a scale. On the left side of the scale, we have 30 grams. On the right side of the scale, we have 5 grams, 10 grams, and 15 grams. What happens if I take away one of the loads on the right side of the scale? Of course, it will not be balanced anymore. Same thing with um, being successful as a student. You have to have that balance. You have, to have, you have to balance everything for you to become successful. Now, the question now is, why are we talking about balance? Um, later on, as we go on to our lesson, you will know why balance is such an important thing in solving linear equations in one variable. Now, but before we go to that, let us uh, first have a short review of uh, what we have discussed uh, these past few days. What exactly is a linear equation? A linear equation is, in one variable, is any equation that can be written in the form ax plus b equals c, where a, b, and c are constants, and a is not equal to zero. The following are examples of linear equations in one variable. 2x minus 1 equals zero, negative 5x equals 10 plus x, 3x plus 8 equals 2. We also said that a linear equation is a first degree equation, meaning the highest power or the highest exponent in your variable must not be greater than 1. It must not also be less than 1, okay? It just has to be 1. Again, for you to consider an equation, a first degree equation or a linear equation, the highest exponent that you will see in your variable is 1. Is that clear? Thank you. Now before we go to our lesson, let us first have a short clear on how to determine whether this equation is a linear equation in one variable or not. Number 1, 2x equals 24. Is that a first degree equation? Yes, it is. Do you see one variable? Yes, we see one variable, and that is x. 
Therefore, can we consider that a linear equation in one variable? Yes, it is a linear equation in one variable. Now take a look at number two. Do you see one variable here? x squared equals 24? Yes, we only see one variable there. The problem is, it's not a first degree equation. As you see, as you can see, the exponent here is 2. Okay? Again, we said that a linear equation has the highest uh, the highest power or the highest exponent that you see in your bottom, in your variable is 1. Okay? In this case, we have 2. So we cannot consider that a linear equation in one variable. Number three, it, it kind of looks complicated, but it's just, it's, just, it's just simple. It's 3 multiplied by quantity y minus 5 equals 4y plus 7. Is that a first degree equation? Yes, it is. Do you see one variable there? Yes, we do. Therefore, we can consider this a linear equation in one variable. Now take a look at number 4. Is that a first degree equation? Yes, it's a first degree equation. So you can see, no exponent is greater than 1. The question now is, do you see one variable? No. Actually, there's x and there's y. So this is a linear equation, but we cannot consider that a linear equation in one variable. Last but not the least, 5x minus 3 plus 4 multiplied by the quantity x minus 1. Well, as you can see, this is not even an equation, so we cannot consider that a linear equation. This is just an algebraic equation, algebraic expression rather. Okay? Now, if you are asked to, uh, to solve for a linear equation in one variable, what exactly are you looking for? Well, that means you're looking for the solution to the linear equation. Okay? A solution to a linear equation is the value of the known variable okay, that can be substituted to that variable and it will still give us a true statement. Okay? Um, and the set of all the solutions is what, is what we call the solution set. For example, 4 is a solution to 3x minus 5 equals 7. Why? Because if I, if I substitute 4 to x, I will get 3 times 4 minus 5 equals 7. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 5 equals 7. 7 here is equal to 7. Therefore, we can conclude that 4 is indeed the solution to 3x minus 5 equals 7. Why? Because after checking, we have a true statement. 7 is indeed equal to 7. On the other hand, 2 is not a solution to 5x minus 9 equals 6. Why? Because if I substitute 2 to x, this will become 5 times 2, which is 10. 10 minus 9 is not equal to 6. 10 minus 9 is 1. 1 is not equal to 6. So there you have it, a false statement. Once you have a false statement, after checking, that means that solution, okay, or that number is not really the solution to the linear equation 5x minus 9 equals 6. Okay. Now, how do we really solve a linear equation in one variable? To solve a linear equation in one variable, we need to get the variable unknown on one side of the equation. For example, and the first example, x plus 9 equals negative 7. We said that for you to be able to solve a linear equation in one variable, you have to make sure that your variable is unknown on one side of the equation, either on the left side or on the right side. But in this problem, you can see that your variable is on the left side. The problem now is that math. The only way to isolate x is to get b of that positive 9. Now how do we do that? Simple. We apply what we call the additive, uh, sorry, the addition property of equality. The addition property of equality states that a number added to the left side of the equation must be added to the right side of the equation as well for you to be able to maintain that balanced equation. 
this is where um, the balance scale comes in, the one we've talked about before. You have to make sure that everything is balanced here. Whatever you add on the left side must be added to the right side. So the only way to cancel positive 9 there or to get rid of that positive 9 is to add the additive inverse of positive 9 to the left side and to the right side as well. Now, how is that? Remember that the additive inverse of positive 9 is negative 9. So I just have to add negative 9 to the left side. Also, negative 9 to the right side. 9 plus negative 9 will cancel out, of course. Okay. So I will be left with x which is just equal to the sum of negative 7, negative 9, which is negative 16. There you have it. The solution to x plus 9 equals negative 7 equals negative 16. Now let, let us try to look at the second example. 9x equals 27. Well, again, you have to make sure that your variable is alone on one side of the equation. The problem is, we have 9 here. Now, how do we get rid of that 9? We can get rid of that 9 by applying what you call the multiplication property of equality, or the MPE. Well, um, the multiplication property of equality states that whatever you multiply on 